Okay. Okay, Mataji. Uh, so kids, can we all uh, do the prayers? Otherwise, do you want to lead us? Or, you know, since we have Balram here on the spot, we'll have that Balram do it. Do okay? Okay, Mataji. All right. Thank you, Advait, and thank you, Balram. Go ahead. Om Ajnana Timira. Mira Andrasya, Yana Andrana Salapaya, Ekshara Minitam Yena, Mai Sri Guru Vena Maha, Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Niti Nami, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Prashtaya, Nuri Kesha Pranayama, Asha Shadeha Karini, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adhita Kataraja Shiva Sadhika Adi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare All right beautiful Balram thank you so much for leading all of us with the prayers Okay, so we will get started with our introduction to Balaram. Balaram, he loves music, he loves to listen and learn to Vaishnava songs, and he has interest in learning prayers from Bhagavatam. He also likes to learn slokas and loves to participate in Govinda classes. Uh, so Balaram is the son of uh, Shamarupini Mataji. Uh, she's been a uh, great devotee herself, and she conducts lots of classes. She does Damodar class in Bhakti Sangha and many other classes. So, uh, Balram, you're very, very fortunate to have been born in such a good devotee family, isn't it? Uh, because you're nourished and taken care of very well. With this introduction, we will have Balram start our presentation for today. Thank you, Balram, for ch having chosen this topic. I know. Tomorrow, I think, isn't it? It's tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, appearance of Shiva's chakra. All right. I'm eagerly looking forward to hearing your presentation. Thank you, Balram. Thank you, Mataji. Glories are Shiva's Acharya. Three Panchatatva. Three Panchatatva Makam Krishnam. Pakta Rupa Swarupakam. Pakta Translation. I offer my respectful obeisances, ob obeisances unto the Supreme Lord Krishna, who is not different from his features as a devotee. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu devotional manifestation, Nityananda Prabhu devotional incarnation, Advaita Acharya devotional energy, Kadadar Pandit, a pure devotee, she was Pandit to Chaitanya Taitamita. Who is Srivas Thakur? Srivas Thakur is the only member of, Panchit, of the Panchatattva who is a Jiva Tattva. He is considered to be the incarnation of Narada Muni. Srimad Vrindavan Das Thakur, the compiler of Chaitanya Bhagavad says, in Navadvip Dham, there's the Holy Pandit, Sri Srivas. And at his temple, Chaitanya performed his sweet vilas. Srivas and his brothers always sang the holy name and did their kirtan puja and Ganges bath three times a day. Srivas, Sri Rama, Sri Pati, and Srinidhi were four brothers. They used to live in Sri Hatta, but after some time, they moved to Navadvip Dham. The four brothers used to go to Advaita Acharya's house to listen to the Bhagavatam class, to perform Namasan Kirtan, and to participate in different Vishnu activities. They were all friends with three Jagannath Mishra, the, the father of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The four of them used to love to hear the Bhagavatam perform some Kirtan together. Shiva's Thakur and Lord Chaitanya. As a result of their devotion, the four brothers knew that Sri Krishna would soon appear in the house of Jagannath Mishra. Shiva's Thakur's wife, Molly Devi, was a good friend of Sachi Devi, and they would derive great 
satisfaction in one another's company. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this world, Advaita Acharya and Sri and she was pundit could understand the importance of his auspicious appearance. She was Thakur, Nalini Devi, Kesachi Devi, and Dakara Mishra much advice on how to raise their new son. They were just like Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mother and father. Because young Nimai Pandit seemed to have grown arrogant by his scholarship, one day, Srivas Pandit told them, why do people study? Because that they might understand what is devotion to Sri Krishna. If by scholarship, one doesn't gain devotion to Sri Krishna, then how about learning to help him? It becomes simply by a waste of time. If you have actually learned something, then begin your worship of Sri Krishna. No, make and haste. This is the purpose of your life. Nima laughed as he replied, By your mercy, certainly that will come to be. If you, if you are all kind enough for me, then definitely I'll attain devotion to Sri Krishna's lotus feet. Shortly thereafter, Mahaprabhu accepted invitation from Sri Ishwara for you. The Lord wanted to show us that without blessings of great souls, without the prayers of great Vishnavas, pleading Krishna to give mercy to us, there is no hope of our really receiving the mercy of Krishna. Lord Krishna was born in Mathura, but performed his most intimate pastimes in Vrindavana. Similarly, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born in the house of Jagannatha. He performed his most intimate pastimes in the house of Srivas Thakur. One day, in an ecstatic mood, Lord Guranga entered Srivas' house, house asking, Srivas, whom do you worship? Whom do you meditate upon? Now with your own two eyes, see that person standing before you. After saying this, Mahaprabhu entered a deity room within Srivas' home temple and sat down on the Simhasana of Lord Vishnu, revealing his own forearm form, holding the conch, this club, and the lotus flower. Seeing this form, Srivas was totally astonished. Sri Gaurasundara then said, due to being called by your son Kirtan and the loud roaring Ashwarya Acharya, I have left Vaikuntha to have descended upon this mortal world, accompanied by my eternal associates, who destroyed the miscreants and delivered the pious. Now without fear, you can chant my glories. Hearing these words of his Lord, which dispelled all fear, Sri Vas fell on the ground, offering his, ob his obeisances, and he began to recite hymns in praise of the Lord. Today, my birth, my activities, my everything has become successful. Today, my very existence has be been crowned with the greatest auspiciousness. Today, the race of my forefathers has finally borne fruit, and my house, which was also their house, has become blessed. Today, the great fortune of my eyes is completely beyond calculation. Because I have been able to see the person whose lotus feet are served by the goddess of Fortune Lakshmi Devi. Having, having described thus, Sri Gaurasandara showed even more compassion to Srivas by revealing himself to all of his family members. Seeing the Nias of Srivas Pandit present before him, Lord Guranga called to her. Her Narayani called upon Sri Krishna with tears in your eyes. And immediately, the little girl, only four years of age, as if in a delirious frenzy, began to cry out, Hurry, Krishna, was shedding tears constantly. Seeing little Narayani totally agitated in ecstatic love, Sri was his wife, and even the household servants also began to shed tears of love. The courtyard of Shivas took on a very beautiful appearance, being decorated with ecstatic love for Krishna. Pastai made servant at Shivas Thakur's house. There there was once a maid servant in Shiva's Pandit's house, but her name Dukki. Every, every day she used to bring water from the Ganga or Mahaprabhu's bath. One day Gaurasundra asked Shiva's, who brings this water? Dukki brings it, Shiva's replied. From today, her name is Suki. Thus the Lord indicated that 
those who serve the Lord and the Lord's devotees are not dukkhi, sad, rather they are sukhi, happy. As then he was Thakur's son. One evening, Sri Gaura Sundar, accompanied by his associates, was engaged in chanting and dancing at the house of Sri Was Thakur. And one of Sri Was Thakur's son had passed away after having suffered the effects of some disease. Within the inner apartment of his house, the woman began to wail in lamentation at the boy's untimely death. She was wondered who was outside in the courtyard understood some strategy must have taken place. He quickly entered the house only to find out that his son had passed on to the next world. As he was a very grave devotee, completely conversant in the science of the absolute truth. He was he was able to console the woman in their grief. You are all aware of Krishna's glories, so please restrain yourselves and don't cry. Whoever during the, his last moments hears the holy name, even though he might be the greatest sinner at his Krishna's about, and that incomparably wonderful Lord, he whose glories are sung by all his servants, up to and including Lord Brahma, is now personally dancing in the courtyard of your house. Not a blade of grass moves on the left by Krishna's will. To see in this happiness or distress, or knowledge, or ignorance is simply imagination. No doubt, whatever Krishna wills is good, and thus giving up your own selfish desires become free from confusion and unnecessary moderation. Krishna is giving and Krishna is taking away. And it is Krishna alone who is maintaining everyone. Someone he protects and someone he destroys all according to his will. Having given all these instructions to these present, Sri was again went outside the door. Mahaprabhu in the study, chanting and dancing. The woman leaving a dead body came to hear the kirtan of Mahaprabhu. And so Mahaprabhu continued chanting until the middle of the night. When everyone was at last leaving the rest, Mahaprabhu spoke. Today, my mind is feeling some tribulation. I think some sad event has occurred in Trivas's house. The pundit replied, What possible unhappiness could there be in that person's house? Where, where your divinely blissful countenance is seen? Trivas, why wasn't I feeling bliss and kirtan today? What inauspicious thing transpired in your house? He was answered, my lord, you are yourself auspicious where you are present. The sorrow can be found anywhere. But the other devotees informed the lord that Sri was his son had passed away. Hearing this news, Goraya cried out, alas, what a tr tragic event. Why didn't you tell me of this unfortunate news before? I will, I will explain, she was pundit replied. I can't tolerate disturbing you while you were in drinks and kitten. If one of my sons dies, what sorrow is there in that for me? If we're enjoying some kirtan, if one of my sons dies, what sorrow is there in that in that for me? If I if we all die while seeing you, that would actually be a matter of great happiness. On the other hand, if you would have to stop dancing, then perhaps I would have died. My Lord, this was a danger that I feared, and this I didn't tell you at that time. Seeing Sri Vas Pandit's profound devotion, Sri Gorasundara said, How can I give up such company as this? With tears in his eyes, he continued, Too, too love for me. He didn't even feel lamentation at the death of his son. How will I bend in their companionship? The Lord continued to cry, and the devotees began to worry within having heard him speak of leaving them. Thereafter, Mahaprabhu came to where the dead body of the infant was lying. Touching it, he called, Boy, why are you going away and leaving Srivast Pandits?
Nothing. Hi, Balram. Hi, Mataji. Mataji, it's not moving on to the next slide, Mataji. Yeah, yeah, you can move on to the next slide by clicking oh. that down arrow. Yeah. And now what? Look. The life of a dead child returned at the touch of Mahaprabhu's hand. After offering obeisances to the Lord, he replied, O oh, Prabhu, whatever your ordain is absolute. No one can do anything but what is approved by you. As many days as I was this time to remain here, as many days I have stayed. But then my time has elapsed, I have proceeded to leave. Mahaprabhu then told him, Since myself and Lisananda are your two sons, please don't feel any more distress in your mind. Over what has happened hearing these compassionate words of their Lord, the devotees' tears were resounded throughout the heavens, proving the statements of Shastra. Their Lordship, Govindananda, became deeply grateful to Sri Vas due to his great love for and service to them. Mahaprakash Leela. One day, Lord Chaitanya came to the house of Sri Vas and he manifested. The Mahaprakash Leela. The Lord entered Srivas's courtyard. He sat on the throne of Vishnu. In the past, in the role of a devotee, he took a few moments to timidly sit to give happiness to devotees. But on this day, he sat very firmly with conviction and he sat for 24 continuous hours, revealing his own various incarnations according to his devotee love for him. They began to sing the song for Abhishek and hundreds and thousands of buckets and pots of water from Ganga were pouring over Sanya's head as he was just accepting all these services that devotees wanted to offer him. Upo Chapala. Upo Chapala was a local brahmana who disapproved of the Kirtans at Sri Vastakur's house and accepted Defamation, Kopal placed sacrificial items at the Thakur doorstep, intim intimating, intimating that Shivas was actually a meat eating drunkard. As the villagers learned of the news, Shivas refrained from defending himself and instead humbly announced to everyone how degraded he was. Everyone clearly understood how that. This was the devious scheming of Gopal. As a result of his offense behavior, Gopal contracted leprosy and was only relieved from his illness when he approached Shiva for forgiveness. After Mahaprabhu took sannyasi, Shiva's pundit came to live at Kumar Hatta. Every year he would go with his brother to see Mahaprabhu at Puri. He was also re regularly came to see Sri Sachi Mata and Navadvip would spend a few days there during those times. When Mahaprabhu came from Nilachala to see his mother in the river Ganges, he also stopped at Kumarhata to see Srivas. After the same some days at Veta's house, Mahaprabhu came to Srivas temple at Kumarhata. He will it was at this time that Mahaprabhu gave his benediction to Srivas. There will be never be poverty in your house. If you simply remain indoors, never even venturing out of your house, whatever you require for your worship will come to your door. Srivas Pandit, along with his three brothers, eternally served Sri Gosundara. He is incarnation of Narada, accompanied the from Mahaprabhu and all his Navadip Leelas. Across the Ganges from Halish Khlishar, the present name of the village of Kumarhata, the town of the name, Dutra. Located there, here are some very beautiful deities of Sri Sri Nitai Guranga. It is believed that they are the worshipful deities of Sri Srivas Pandit. This is Sri Angan. This is the place where this is the front entrance. This is a place where Lord Guranga and his associates started the Sankirtan movement. And this is where the deities of Sri Sri Radha Krishna and Chaitanya are uh, in this temple. And she was Angan. Oh, Banga Danga. Danga. Kazi 
broke the sac sacred mridanga in his foolish attempt to stop some Kirtan woman. So she was Angan, is also known as Kuru Panga Danga. Uh, I'm going to sing a song too, Mataji. Wonderful. Looking forward, dear. Okay. Lord the Lord the sons of fortune hide your face. Your blissful from life shall be your mind. My wonders call my heart, hearts and rays. As dawn displays your beauty in the sky. The rainbow of the colors show your dress. The moments of the moon reflect your mind. Your smiling gives the castle happiness. And love exists because you are so calm. Oh, go and know within my heart. So love you, horse man, Lord, as I do. Your precious gift of love. Oh, you stand behind the sun. You're the one in my heart. Rolling river flow forth from your veins. Let the fruit of the sky come from your hair. The seeds of love are watered by your rain. And from your breathing blows the mighty air. My Lord, you are the source of all I see. The moments are the passing days of time. You are the resting place of all the be. And love exists because you are so kind. Oh, go in love with your heart. Celestial herdsman, Lord, is I Your precious gift of love is Oh, you stand behind the sun. You're the world in my heart. In my heart. Let's see what's talking to KJ. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Shila Shiva Staku Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear. Uh, Balram, this was like an amazing, amazing presentation. Oh my God. You just narrated the entire history of Shiva's Thakur, isn't it? Starting from, uh, you know, start, I think uh, you covered so many points. They were all brothers and they were all sitting together, enjoying, relishing Bhagavatam together. How nice, isn't it? When we come under the association of devotees, we all feel like brothers and sisters, isn't it? Even though I'm teaching uh, you guys, sometimes I feel I'm one amongst you. You know, that's kind of the closeness we feel together in association, isn't it? Mm, Balram, sometimes you see today you gave a presentation, you were sitting in the stand of a teacher, but didn't you, didn't you, uh, didn't you feel as if you're all one amongst us, like together as a family, we all listen and hear Krishna Kata, didn't you feel that? Yeah, and uh, so I really love that point where the brothers, they were coming together and hearing Paragavatam every day and relishing Krishna Kata and they were able to predict that, oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Lord is going to come in the house of Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata. And that prediction was there because they were full of devotion. And that was, that was what you pointed out, Balaram, in your story as well. And then uh, how they actually perform Sankirtan in Shiva's Thakur Sangan, right? How they ecstatically yeah. enjoyed and uh, performed that. And then you spoke about um, Mahaprabhu's Mahaprakash Leela as well. And then, then Mahaprabhu was feeling, oh my God, I couldn't relish. Uh, something is going on wrong somewhere and somebody is hiding in Shiva Sangan's house. And then you pointed out who that person was. So it was such a relishing story. And then a beautiful song. Who taught you that song, Balram? Mm, I, learned, I learned song. No, who taught you, I, I'm asking. Uh, nobody taught it to me much. I learned it by myself. Oh, you learned it by yourself with such great tune? Oh yeah. my God, that was like a, a peppy song. 
Wonderful. I thought somebody taught you the song and you happened to just, uh, you know, recreate it or something like that. But you learned it all by yourself. So, Balram, how old are you? Nine. Nine, nine and a half. Yeah, nine and a half. Nine and a half. Oh, my. So, you're going to be a big boy soon, double digits. <laughs> and do you know what? You should wish uh, your mom from my behalf happy birthday to her because just now I've been seeing my messages. And you should let her know that Radhika Mataji wished you a very, very, very happy Krishna Conscious Day. All right? Because, you know, I forgot, uh, I didn't look at the messages for a long time now. And uh, it just popped up today. And I thought, okay, let me convey to Balram since he's here. So 25 slides. Who helped you prepare the slides? Or did you do it all by yourself? Uh, me and my parents, they, we all did it together. You all did it together as a family? Very nice, very nice. Kudos to your work, Palram, and a great, great job. We look forward to hearing more stories from you. Now that you've become an expert to completely cover the entire history, so we can wait for more Vaishnava stories, right, in the future. Yes, Definitely look forward to hearing from you, dear. Thank you for such a wonderful presentation. And now we can have question and answers or comments for Balram. All right, so I will call you all one by one so you can raise your, or yeah, you've all raised your hands. I'll go one by one, okay? Vinita Gandharvika Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Balram, such a beautiful presentation. You have glorified so nicely, uh, you know, and also the, um, the, I really like the rhyme, you know. Can you, can you send your rhyme video separately? Okay, on YouTube, okay, and I want I want all Damodar kids to learn. Yeah, this I also rhyme. want to learn that rhyme. Such a beautiful rhyme. The way you described all the pastimes, and at, at the end you showed so many pictures, right? That made us to go to that place and understand the pastime that you have explained. It was so nice. Thank you so much, Balram. I miss you a lot. You are not being seen these days in the classes. Could you please come back at least for me? Okay, okay, lots of love to you, Balram. <laughs> Very nice presentation. Okay, I see mommy. Yeah. Um, Hare Krishna, Balram. I really like your presentation. And also, I like how you said the stories and pastimes. And I also like your rhyme and even the pictures that you stole at the end. And also, I know that if you, like, like, um, the pictures that you show at the end made me to feel that I'm also going in those places. Oh, very nice, Brinda. And Thank you, dear Brinda and Vinita Mataji. Okay, let's go on to Mukund. Thank you very much for the very beautiful presentation. Uh, the, I, I really like um the pictures that you showed in the end and the bhajan it was really really nice um so i i really like the pastimes that you picked because they uh, helped me understand lord chaitanya's pastimes and um on who shiva's thakur is and i especially liked on the details that you gave about shiva's thakur in the beginning um because i actually did not know most of those details uh, there were like very deep details that I got to know today. Thank you very much, Balram, for the awesome presentation. Hare Krishna. Thank you, dear Mukund. That was so nice. All right, Isha. Hare yeah. Krishna, Balram. I really like your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, dear Isha. Right, Prahlad. Balaram, I really liked your presentation and also your presentation was dramatic. Like it was also very, it was like a play and you were so confident and for saying your um, pastimes and the presentation. So I really liked the, I really liked your presentation and the most, uh, most favorable part I really liked is the rhyme. And I also like the pastimes. Thank you, Balaram. You're very bad. Thank you, dear Rai Prahlad Kavya. 
Balaram, I really liked your presentation. Um, thank you for sharing. I like um, I like the uh, stories, uh, what you told, and I, I also like uh, the rhyme. Welcome, yeah. Thank you, dear Kavya. All right, Samskriti. Hi, Krishna Balaram. I like the stories in the rhyme. Some of the stories I haven't even heard of, so they were in good detail. Thank you, Samskriti. All right, thank you, dear Samskriti. Ramachandra. Hi, Krishna Balaram. I really liked your presentation. How you said about a lot of stories that I really didn't know, and you gave a lot of detail on Shiva's Thakur. And I also like the little song that you put at the end. Thank you, Ram Ramachandra. All right. Thank you, dear Ramachandra. And now coming to Shri uh, Shriyan. I don't think he's there at the moment. Okay. Advait. Hey, Krishna Balaram, I really like your presentation and the topic you picked because I also don't know that much about Shiva Stakur. Uh -huh. Um Also, I really like the song at the end. It's like a song. It's like it's like one of those. It's not exactly like uh, it has like a lot of things uh, glorifying, glorifying. It's not only like one thing like and it like uh, explained really nice. So thank you for the presentation. Wonderful. Thank you, dear Ramachandra. And who else did oh, I Advait was saying that. Oh, sorry, sorry. Advait. Uh, and uh, Shriyan is back. Shriyan, did you want to say something? Yes, Mataji. Hmm. But Balram, I really like your presentation and the song. And I have a question. Um, like, where did you find this? that huge big rhyme or song internet i can you know, i can save it with you in the and if you want what i can no, my i can share the song with you if you want to learn no i'm saying my question is um where did you find that huge song in the internet. Oh, okay. There, where did you find it? The internet. Oh, internet. Okay, okay, nice. But how do you know that uh, there is that song? I heard it once before. Oh, okay. Mahapati, you're speaking on mute. Mute. Yeah. Sorry, dear. I was speaking on mute and uh, I was just saying everybody is so curious to know where did you get the song? Where did Balram find this beautiful song? How did you know it, Balram? Please share the secret, isn't it? And now we have a comment from Induleka Karuna Mataji. She's saying, uh, Hare Krishna Balaram, wonderful presentation. Lots of pastimes of Shiva's Thakur. Love the song too. Oh, it's from Pranav. Okay. So this is what uh, we see from Pranav. And that's about it. So we are done with our comments. And again, all glories to Shiva's Thakur. And Balram, great job, dear. Congratulations on such a beautiful presentation. And looking forward to you coming back sometime soon with us to hear. We will be more excited to hear some other pastime or some other Vaishnava story you want to share. Okay? With Mataji, this. Mataji, can I say something, Mataji? Sure, dear. Go ahead. The song was by Prabhupada. Oh, Srila Prabhupada song. <laughs> hmm. It's about his disciple. Prabhupada's disciple wrote the song. Prabhupada's disciple wrote the song. Okay. Great. Thank you for sharing that secret. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we'll go on to our most favorite part of our section, which is 
Story time. Yes, I'm What's excited for the number? stories as well. So let's go on to our stories. I have two stories. The magic number, Mataji. What is that? Ah, the magic number is two. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Yes, it's not one, it's two. Okay. So let's get on to it right away without any further ado. Are you happy, Rahik Prahlad? Yes. Are you all happy? I see Vimta is getting so excited. <laughs> so sweet. All right. As you know what? I also don't read the stories as I told you. I love the mango, by the way, Balavrinda. Really, really yummy, yummy, yummy mango prasad you have. <laughs> okay. So let's get on to the story, kids. So the good and the bad villages is the first story we are going to see. Advait, are you ready? Once, yes, Guru Nanak, okay. Once Guru Nanak, the Sikh teacher, was traveling with a disciple whose name was Mardan. Okay, when I don't know what's going to happen, they come across a village where people were inhospitable. Inhospitable means they don't, they're not quite welcoming. Okay. Oh no, go find someone else. I think, uh, you know, he wanted something, but they didn't give them what they wanted. You go find someone else. We don't have anything to give you. So this is what inhospitality means. All right. So they, they are not very uh, pleasing, welcoming. Please go from here. We don't have anything. This lady also said the same thing. In this village, people are so miser that they don't even wish to give arms to sadhus oh they they you know they do that now they go madhukari they do madhukari because only by the arms they survive they they would go to each person's house and then they would ask for arms and if they give they eat and if they don't give they just fast for that day that's kind of how it works out for them okay so now here it looks like everybody is saying no we don't have anything you go sadhu we don't have anything this also shows that they don't have uh, um, they, 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 they don't know about the glories of the sadhu, it looks like, isn't it? From the onset, it looks like they don't know about glories of the sadhu because if, say, for example, sadhu comes to our house, how much welcoming we would be, isn't it? Even if we are not feeling well, even if we are not feeling good, we will try to serve the sadhus and uh, um, give pleasure to them. But here, people, probably they don't understand the glories of the sadhus and that is why they are not welcoming. And here we see that the sadhu is saying, we are all so miserly. Miserly means they don't want to give, they, they want to have everything for themselves. Okay, it is me, mine, me, mine, me, mine. I don't want to share. I don't want to share like that. May this village always be here. Soon after, they left for another village. The villagers here were extremely kind and courteous to their guests. Please come inside and bless us by your presence. Can you understand? See such a contrast to see the villagers who are extremely kind to their guests. On the contrast, we saw the other village. They were just letting the sadhus go. I was saying, uh, we don't have anything for you. Please accept this offering, O saintly person. Make yourself comfortable and bless us. See how nicely so many different types of dishes they have kept and they want the blessings of the sadhus. This shows they understand the glories of the sadhus. Oh saint, oh saint, please accept the small offering. See how nicely they are bringing small, small offerings and offering that to sadhu. In this way, villages, in this way, the village people gave lots of things in charity to show their love towards Guru Nanak. Uh, so how much love they have is seen by how much they want to give themselves to the sadhu. How courteous and kind they were. How welcoming they were. And how many dishes did they offer? So such grand opulent meal they offered. This shows the generosity of them. This doesn't, uh, this actually shows they are not miserly like in the other village. This shows that they know about and understand the glories of the sadhu. So many things to learn, isn't it? Guru Nanak and this disciple were about to leave the village. May this village be destroyed and its people spread over the earth. So the, that, that particular village, he said, may this village remain as it is, right? right? What did he say here? Uh, I think here, may this village always be here. And here he's saying, 
if you look at it very carefully, he's saying, may this village be destroyed and its people spread all over the earth. Okay, we will see what is the understanding soon. And now, my dear master, when you left the bad village, you wished it well. And now when you leave this good village, you wish that it be destroyed. Isn't that very strange? Now, this disciple of Guru Nanak, he asked, we have the same question like him, isn't it? What is this, Maharaj? You are saying you left the bad village and you wished it very, very well. And now you're leaving this good village and you wish to it to be destroyed. What is this contradiction? It looks like very strange to me. Can you please help me understand? And now Guru Nanak is going to respond. Not at all, my boy, not at all. When I left the good village, I wanted its inhabitants to be spread out all over the world to shed sweetness and light. Because he wanted that message in glory be spread to all people. Because what did they understand? They understood the glories of the sadhu. They have all good contact in them. So they have all Vaishnava etiquette in them. And that has to be spread out, isn't it? If they are confined to that village, then how will that glory spread? So that is the reason why he said, let it be destroyed. And let the people go and move on to spread out the glories of this glories all over the world. And when I forsook the bad one, I expressed the wish that its meanness of spirit might forever be confined to that small place. So that meanness should not spread, isn't it? And that is why he said, let it be. However it is, let it be there. Are you able to understand, kids? Such a beautiful point that Guru Nanak is trying to say that he wanted the goodness to remain uh, goodness to remain all over the world because of which he wanted that good village be destroyed so that people can spread the glory. And then the second uh, place, that's the first place, it's a very bad place. People are so mean. That mean mentality has to stay in that small place. It should not spread anywhere else. So he confined it to this, that place and said, let that place be wherever it is. Okay, so this is the understanding. My spiritual master is so wise and I am so fortunate to take such good lessons. This disciple very much was appreciative of the spiritual master. And he said, I am so, so blessed and honored to be known, to, to, to learn from you these wise teachings. Likewise, even in our lives, our spiritual master plays a very, very important role, right? I mean, uh, all, all the disciples of Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada himself, his God brothers, they have all given us so much. And, um, and his, his spiritual master, Prabhupada's spiritual master, his father. So, so like that, our parampara as such is so, so nourishing and so, so fulfilling. And they are the well-wishers of all of us. And they have given us so many teachings. And we are all blessed to come under that realm and understand the teachings of our parampara. And uh, so that we can understand what is our original nature? And uh, because we have forgotten it all now and we need to revive that forgotten consciousness. So this is the beautiful takeaway from this pleasant story. Guru always wishes the best for everyone. However, his words may sound confusing or contradictory sometimes, but his intention and will are always good. So that is why they say, even if you don't understand what your guru is saying now, just take it as it is. In the course of time, we will understand what does this teaching mean and what it means for us. So sometimes we will feel that our guru says something which is not maybe practical or maybe not possible for us to implement, or maybe you don't understand why he said that. So things of that nature. But sometimes we just have, to, if we will understand it at a later point in time, we just have to leave it and simply follow the instructions. And in the course of time, we will get the answer as to why the guru said this way, right? Be it chastisement or be it a learning or be it a takeaway or be it you hear an audio recording and he says something. Even if it is not revealed to you now, we take his words seriously and try to follow it. In the course of time, we will understand what is in store for us. What did Guru actually mean? And uh, we, we probably would have completed the implementation. We would have understood, oh, this is why Guru said. And so always you should have that faith that whatever he says is for our goodwill. All right. So this is the understanding from this particular story of Guru Nanak Ji. And now we are coming to the second story. All right. Are you all uh, good with the first one, kids? Yes, Mataji. Did you all like it? I loved it so much for some reason. Yeah, I liked it. 
Yeah, I I really loved it. So this is the second story. We'll see what 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 the story has to tell us. All right, the expert plasterer. Wow, <laughs> the the title is a little uh, funny. Let's see. The story is about an expert plasterer who worked on the construction of Taj Mahal. We all know about Taj Mahal, right? That is in India and in Delhi. Yeah. So this is about that place. This particular plasterer is trying to work on the construction of Taj Mahal. Once the chief of construction was inspecting the site progress for three days in a row, he noticed the particular plasterer, the same spot mixing and testing the plaster. So this is the spot that plaster was there and the same spot he's been sitting there for three continuous days. And then what happens? On the third day, the inspector became angry and said, why are you simply sitting here in the same spot for three days without making any good progress? You're so lazy. Like that he shouted at him. The other workers are finishing the work so fast and you're making no progress at all. You have not even finalized this plaster mix. What's this? Like that he's shouting at him. And he threw a handful of plaster at the inspector. <laughs> this guy. However, the plaster miss, missed the inspector and landed on, plaster actually missed the inspector and landed on a wall. It was so well mixed, so solid and hard that no one could get it off the wall. Till today, the plaster remains on the wall. Can you believe it? Why he was doing what he was doing? That was because he wanted that plaster to be so solid and hard. He didn't want the plaster to just be like a wishy-washy thing, right? He did it with so much attention and so much detail and he had so much patience to it. And when somebody shouted at him for not having done the job properly, he got angry. Are you able to understand? Of course, that anger also must be controlled. If somebody is trying to blame us or criticize us, we can't get angry at them. It is, uh, it's just due to their ignorance, they are doing what they are doing. One minute, kids. Just a minute. Okay. So till today, the plaster remains on the wall. See how hard it is for anyone to take it out also. So the moral is, whatever we do, we must do it with perfection. This is the understanding. So any job we take up, it has to be done with perfection. And uh, this is a learning lesson even for me, because uh, some jobs I take it very seriously, some jobs I don't. So this is good learning point for me that whatever we do, we have to do it with perfection. So I, I actually, I don't follow this rule quite yet. So Martha, think, ji, yeah. Martha, ji, these are really short stories. So can, can we do a long story? Oh, okay, dear. For Sri Ram, <clears throat> Sri Ram is asking for one more. Who wants one more? <laughs> Sorry, Sri Ram. Okay. I want one more. We all want one more. Okay, kids, I'll go with what you say. I'm going to this question. Everyone will say yes. <laughs> yeah, everyone will say. Adwaita, are you happy? <laughs> Is Adwaita yes. around? Adwaita was he ecstatic. He yes. Was, he static? Yes. Yes, we are able to hear you, dear Advaita. Okay, let me go for one more story. I don't have a PowerPoint, but you can just do it on the slides as such, okay? Mataji, mm. which website are you like? Are you a ISKCON Desire Tree? Yeah, ISKCON Desire Tree. But Can I'm going to share my screen. IskCONDesireTree.com. Mm, yes. There is everything there. One minute, dear. One minute. Let me pause. Just a minute. Um, you know what? I'm going to. Uh, let me just pause here for a minute. Okay. I'm going to do a new share. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are you able to see? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. Let's 
sorry kids the drunkard once there was a man who used to drink alcohol all the time oh my god he wants to forget himself and his identity maybe that's why in india drinking is considered a great sin so his friend said if you drink you will go to hell like that hearing that the man said oh my father also drinks what do you mean then your father also will go to hell this boy this friend of him is saying actually we can only see the first uh, first slide really oh marjorie for me all it says is radhika kasturi has started screen sharing yeah double click to enter full screen you can see the the title what is this hmm okay, now we now i can see now uh-huh. what did it mean then okay good so once there was a man he used to drink all the time okay and in india drinking is considered a great sin so this friend he saying <laughs> if you drink you will go to hell now his this man is saying he, uh, hearing that my father also drinks what's the problem and then your father also is going to go to hell like that this friend of him is saying oh my brother also drinks then he will also go to hell in this way he continued to say my brother drinks my sister drinks and so on and so forth and his friend kept replying yes they will go to hell yes they will go to hell yes they will go to hell hell hearing that everyone will go to hell he said okay then hell is like heaven because all my family members are there because if we are drinking here and enjoying together we can drink there and enjoy together in that case even hell will be heaven <laughs> so the typical mentality of atheists is shown here um so they have no idea of the kingdom of god head they are idea of pleasure is simply relief from suffering but in actuality the pleasure is internal bliss which is obtained by devotional service so whatever we tell them the atheists they are not going to listen to us they are going to just simply say there is no idea there is no god there is nothing i just want to simply gratify my senses and this is what they will say and we know we understand the whatever pleasure that we are getting through this process of devotional service is fulfilling and it gives you internal bliss but uh, any other pleasures they are going to be temporary and nothing is going to resolve any kind of suffering that we have that is eternally birth death old age and disease is not going to be taken care of if you don't get into this process of devotional service this is also a very short story i don't know is kon desai tree has only short stories if you have any recommendation this story is on another level you know mm-hmm. so people are in such a madness mm-hmm. when they are saying but they are saying that okay let all my family go the life of us oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah right mataji mataji can we have another story please because it's a really short story Oh, Kavya, what is this, Kavya? We can it's like to... one minute. I know, it's like one minute. So let me see if we have another story. If we have a one minute story. Another one minute story. <laughs> uh, let me see. I really didn't uh, expect that we will do so many stories, but still. Okay, the do- dosing judge. Okay, this is also a short story only. Let me see. Okay. Hmm. Let me see one second. I'll just save this and then I'll open it on the PowerPoint. Okay. Hari 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 Hari. Okay. Yes. Got it. Ah, uh, hurry, hurry! You can let it reduce the size. Once there was a judge who was overseeing a case. The persecution was speaking. Those the pro- pro- prosecution was speaking, and the defense was putting forth his argument. He thought, "Let me read the papers first, and then do the needful." 
On the other hand, the prosecution and defense were having their own arguments and proofs to present their cases. I object this, Your Honor. My Lord, according to my case, this is not like what was presented. In the middle of the case, see what happened, the judge doze off. Seeing the judge dozing, the courtroom deputy said, Oh, Honor, you're dozing off. You're not being attentive to the case. The judge carelessly replied, the decision has already been made, so I don't need to pay any attention to the talks. And then he went back to sleep. So the judge has already made the decision. The defense and prosecution could say whatever they wanted. But as far as the decision was concerned, there was going to be no changes. Similarly, according to our karma, even Yamaraj has decided as to when we will die and when we will take birth. No one will be able to manipulate him. Um, so it's this is uh, kind of uh, a big moral, right? I mean, in the sense, according to our karma, we are destined to go wherever we want. So if we are behaving, so the thing, one good thing that we are doing is that we are chanting the glories of the holy names of the Lord. And uh, this could guarantee us human birth, according to Srila Prabhupada. So at least we are not going to go to the lower species where devotional service is we cannot perform that act of devotional service so such so such a good thing and the second thing is based on our karma uh, in the sense we need to make sure that we are trying to do every action to please the lord right and that is what our spiritual spiritual master says us so we need to do anukulyasya sankalpa pratikulyasya varjanam so whatever is favorable for the devotional service we try to go on with that act of performance of that act and then whatever is not favorable we try to reject that act so if we keep doing this to please krishna krishna will be very happy and he'll make us be born again or if you don't perfect i mean this is quote unquote if we don't perfect we'll be at least uh, continue we'll continue neha bikramana sosti right we'll continue from wherever we left off so this is this is what is the incentive that Krishna gives us. So we will try to stick on and uh, do our process of devotional service with faith and rigor and determination and enthusiasm. And uh, that way we will try to please the lordships and also please our Guru Vargas. Okay, kids. So this is the understanding from the story. So I like this part where the judge is sleeping, right? <laughs> Just sleeping, he doesn't care about what is going on. And here there is a needed argument. They are fighting who's going to, who's saying more and who, how can I counteract this guy? So both of them are trying to uh, contra contradict each other and argument in a very argumentative mood they are talking. But here this judge is sleeping and relaxing and enjoying <laughs> because he already made his decision. Okay. Sorry, kids. This was also a short story. If you have any recommendations and if you find of any good sites, Shriyan, you, you, do you know any good sites which can actually give us moral stories? My mom told us really long stories, so maybe I could ask her. Yes, you should ask her and you should message me. She has Mahabharat stories, Ramayana stories, all of those stuff. Yeah, Ramayana and Mahabharat stories are all pretty long yeah, stories. Yeah, also and everything. All moral ones we have. My dad has an app, so. Oh, he has an app. Okay, you should just let me know what that app is. All right. So we will then. Uh, re I mean, you can message me. Do you know my number? No, I I'm in the group, so I can message in the group. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, dear Shriyan. I appreciate it because it came from you. I want to make sure that you are satisfied. Okay, kids. Are you all happy now? Kavya, are you yes. there? Yes, Mataji. Are you happy, dear? Yes. Okay. Are you happy, Advait, Ramchandra, Mukul, yes, yes. Saumya, Saumya, I see your beautiful face for the first time. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. How old are you, dear Saumya? I am 10. You're 10. Double digits. Good job. Yeah. Okay, so Samskriti, Tulsi Manjari, Isha, are you all happy kids? Yes, yes Mataji. Mataji. Yes, okay. Mataji. So now I'm going to tell you a big secret. Yes, Mataji. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you a big secret. Are you all waiting for that secret? 
Yes, Mataji. So next month, I will. I'm going to all miss you all in the sense. Uh, I have to actually go to work. Uh, so there's the special training that I'm. I'm going to attend, and because of which I'll not be able to meet you in person. That is virtually. Um, so I will come back after April, hopefully. Can you all pray for me that I come back and teach you all soon? <laughs> yes, yes Okay, that's the great thing. So if you all pray together, Krishna may be pleased and he will just say, okay, let Radhika Mataji resume back her services. Okay? Mataji, so I, I thought that the uh, moral stories they used to be on Wednesday and craft is on Thursday. And no, dear, no, dear. Moral stories are always on Thursday. Okay? Please note that in your timetable. Okay, so this is the important secret I told you. Continue to pray to Krishna. So that I come back and teach you all very, very soon. Okay, let that time pass like this. this. From when are you going? From, May, from April 1st. That is April 4th. Oh, April April. Wait, please, uh, please send a message. Okay, I need your number. We're going to miss you, Mataji. Yes, dear. I'm also going to miss you. That's why I'm saying, oh my God, you know, to be away from you for such a long time is like a punishment to me. And I don't want to punish myself. So as soon as possible, whenever my manager says, Radhika, you're done, you should just go back home and continue working from home, I will come back to you guys, okay? So till then, I'm going to miss you all, but I'm sure Krishna will uh, answer our prayers. So we will keep praying and uh, see you all soon. Maybe very, very Mati, soon. Is that, why, Mati, Mati, is that why you gave us extra stories? Because you're going to... Has... Yeah, I want to stay with you longer. How did you understand this advice? Sure. Otherwise, I will say no, no. But now I yeah. miss you all so much that I'm going to tell, yeah, let's just do this class forever. <laughs> you got it, Advait. Okay. All right. Bye, kids. A lot Bye. of uh, hugs and um, kisses. All right. Hare Krishna. All glory to Sri Prabhupada. All glory to Sri Guru and Gauranga. Hare Krishna. Bye. Hare Krishna Mataji. Thank you, Vinita Kandarvika Mataji. Bye. Hare Krishna.